In a typical American suburb, we see posters with missing girls on every tree in Fanner Pole. A man named Edgar drives around in his van chewing gum and suffering from discomfort in his injured hand, then he takes various items from the trunk, including a bunch of phones and ropes, leaving us guessing. What dark intentions can he have in the next scene? A woman named Neil wakes up in an unfamiliar room, confused and not remembering how she got there. She looks around and discovers an old clock on the wall that doesn't they show the time, but it looks like they're tracking something else. Then she notices a loudspeaker and also a large panel with the number 9 on it, which matches the number on her shirt. And now, he doesn't start looking around the neighborhood in the hope of finding a way out. She cautiously approaches the locked door, but no matter how hard she pushes and pulls, nothing moves with places after a few moments the clock starts to tell off the seconds Neil notices a red rope nearby, and when she comes to check it, she is relieved to find a phone under it. She immediately tries to call the police, but the phone does not. She then stretches the rope across the room, noting its length and shivering at the thought of the possible consequences of what her captors want her to do to her. When she walks around the room she notices a strange trail similar to blood. She assumes that it must have been left. Someone who was here before her now Neil is trying to piece together the mystery of her imprisonment. When she looks up, she notices a glass hatch in the ceiling through which the night sky is visible. Unfortunately, no matter how hard she tries, she can't reach the handle and open it. As Neil desperately calls for help, but then the alarm goes off and the green light turns on in the room after that she just sits down again, preparing for what may happen, but the light quickly returns to normal. Having no other choice, Neil takes out his phone to calm down, but it turns out that all contacts have been erased and the photo gallery has several photos. When Neil looks at a photo of the ocean, she imagines that she is there and tells herself everything will be fine while she searches her phone for more information. She does not stumble upon a photo of a woman by the name of Dawn, which seems very close. She's very happy to see this woman, but Neil also doesn't understand why she quit. Then she starts talking to the photo of Dawn to calm down with a feeling of despair fascination. Rising inside her Nell throws her slippers out the window in the hope of breaking it and finding a way out but her actions are fruitless upset and angry him in a fit of rage. She throws her phone into the wall, but to her surprise, the phone gets stuck on the panel with the number 9 and starts playing a song called Hello Stranger. She also understands that because of the phone, the wall broke, because it is made of cardboard. She sees a glimmer of hope and begins to destroy the wall further hoping to find a way out. But her attempts are futile because she finds another wall behind her. Suddenly the light goes out and the timer starts, counting down 15 minutes, which does not lead to a state of panic outside. She hears shooting and opening doors, windows, so she closes eyes and recites a poem about the ocean in order not to succumb to anxiety after a few seconds. The light returns to normal, and when Nell opens her eyes, she notices that the bolts on the door are pushed back and now. She can open it, however her hopes are dashed again when she discovers another wall behind her, but this time Nell notices a ventilation shaft which she ignores after a few moments. The clock shows 45 minutes and starts. Countdown then she screams and insults those responsible for her abduction, while the green light lights up again, but after a few seconds everything returns to normal however to her surprise. A male voice from the ventilation shaft repeats the insult's eager communication, does not fit the vent, and she tries to talk to him when Neil asks who he is why he kidnapped her. This man's explanation becomes even more frightening and confusing, leaving her with even more questions than answers. This man admits that his name is Travis and that he is also imprisoned there like her, despite their initial awkwardness. They eventually got along, and it seemed funny that her name sounded like a fish soon they realized that they had the same characteristics, except that Travis was assigned. Number 6 Travis insists that he has no idea who kidnapped them. But he keeps asking strange questions like is there a unial chair or is she comfortable in her cell despite the fact that they don't know about it Edgar watches their wallpaper with the help of CCTV cameras later Mel thinks about trying out his rope climbing skills Travis warns her that he tried to open the hatch with his help but it broke but he doesn't decide to try and successfully wraps the rope around handles with a strong knot unfortunately the rope does not withstand its weight so the handle breaks and she falls dislocating her shoulder and suffering from severe headaches mel loses consciousness looking at the photo of dawn on the phone but wakes up a few moments later to the sound of travis calling out her name travis advises her to treat her shoulder while the adrenaline has not subsided 
Neil initially refuses to listen to his idea, believing that she was in such a situation because of him. But as the pain intensifies, she thinks that she is absolutely right. Then she pushes her shoulder back to the wrecked position standing at the edges of the door while they try to distract themselves from their terrible situation, does not play the song Hello Stranger on his phone and Travis whistles along with. It was because it was one of his favorite songs that at this moment her ears begin to ring and she will not see another vision the man standing in front of her grabs her wrist and while she tries to defend herself with a pen taken out of his pocket, she wins his hand. She returns to reality again and Travis asks her if Linnell thinks that she deserves to be there. He claims she deserves to be to be there because he has let others down in his life and that this is his punishment. Nevertheless, Nell believes it disappointing. Others is a natural part of being human and that no one deserves to suffer in a place like this their conversation is cut short when someone appears in Travis' room and starts beating him up then Travis shouts to this person to leave him alone and the green light turns on scared unsure of what is going on. It is experiencing an anxiety attack so she closes her eyes and continues to read the poem after a few moments of lighting she returns to normal and does not think that Travis was killed. But she feels relieved when she hears his voice again, however, Travis has weakened and stopped responding, so Neil swears that she will find a way out and begs. Travis not to fall asleep, then she starts, looking around the room for something and comes across a wire in the wall that she really can. In use at the same time, she tries to keep Travis awake and tell him that he is all she has. There is in this place, however, Travis indicates that there are people outside who care about her and wonders if she has ever lost. Someone Travis explains that he also lost someone who was dear to him. And soon they both realize that they are grieving for the same person whose dawn has come. When Neil accidentally touches his hand, she realizes that something has been placed under her skin. Travis admits that he also has the same on his leg. And it itches strangely when there are only 15 minutes left on the clock. Neil is once again trying to come up with some strategy. This time she decides to unscrew the screws from the vent with the hatch handle the plan worked and she was able to open this evolutionary hole Travis also started doing the same while Nell returned to the wire behind the panel pulling it through the panels of the wall. She found a hidden camera, which she then showed to Travis. Now Neil breaks the wire not allowing Edgar to get into her room she tries to get into the vents but it's hard for her to do it because of the small amount of free space when she squeezes through the vents the laser beam causes a loud alarm and now the whole room turns yellow Travis begins to worry claiming that his kidnappers will torture him again but not calms him down and convinces him to open the vent then she takes care of her shoulder which is dislocated again this time Mel presses him against the panel and notices that she is bleeding from the wound she discovers a strange microchip on her hand and removes it when the timer tells off the time Travis loses his temper again because he can't finish unscrew the ventilation holes he then recites the same poem about the ocean that Neil regularly reads to calm down. When there is only one minute left on the clock, Neil tells him to use another, forced to open, the vents, then Travis pulls hard and tries to open, the vents just when the clock shows zero however the light goes out, and the bolts return to their original position. Blocking Newell's access to Travis after a few moments, the light returns and a small hole appears on the door, opening a bright red light from the other side when Neil slips into it.